just finished cutting all the grass. I did that last night. Really helps with mosquitoes. Over here at the front, uh, I sold this. And this is a block of lead that I melted from wheel weights, all the wheel weights that I got uh, um, from a clean out of a garage. And that was a couple videos ago. Just a big pail of wheel weights. So I melted them down with a propane torch. And what I did is I just had like a, I had a scrap sink. And underneath the sink was just a bucket or a, not a bucket, a, a steel pail. And so all the lead, so I melted the wheel weights in the sink and then all the lead kind of just flowed into the bucket. And that's what you see here. So this is about 45 pounds. I sold that a couple days ago. So I'm just leaving it here at the end of my driveway. So the guy will come by and pick that up. He's uh, he's from out of town, but he's coming into town and he's gonna buy that. He's gonna pick that up. He paid me uh, email transfer and uh, he paid $60 for that. So uh, I like, I always do that with any scrap lead that I get. And uh, this time it was only up on Kijiji for a couple days and uh, yeah. Find find lead is always good for that for for selling to uh, to hunters and whatnot. Oh, I have a UPS package coming in. All right, just going to do shred now. Backing up here into their shred pile. Sometimes you find some pretty cool stuff back here. Gloves. Uh, of course, of course, I parked right in the mud. Ugh. Well, they've been busy. They've been busy. Usually, this place is just full, but now they got they got whittled down quite a bit. Oh, pile isn't as big. Yeah, not much back here. Oh, look at that thing. <laughs> That's pretty decayed old, uh, old motor. That's the oil pickup. The only thing about this yard that I find strange, they should really move it. Look, it's like right underneath this giant tower. You know? If I was the owner, I'd be worried that their loader would bang into the, uh, into one of the one of their legs to pull this whole thing over. Plus it was just, you know, they moved it a little bit over to the right. You know, it gave us a lot more room to maneuver around here. Yeah, all right. Don't have much shred today. I got like $15 worth of shred. All right, I'll let you know how much I get for all this stuff. Goodness, $276. I had no idea I had that much. So yeah, copper rads, 112. Copper two, 34. Brass, 1260. Copper one, $81. Compressors, 12. Aluminum rad, 640 for that aluminum rad. That's okay. Uh, Electric motors and shred, 276. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so on to the next place. I'm going to go pick up some paint. Well, here comes my son, coming home from a hard day of work. Look at this dude. He's just being a show off now. Parking his little, parking his car in the garage. <laughs> How was work today, Spencer? Good. Yeah? Yes. How much money did you earn? $70. $70? Mm -hmm. Holy cow. Found a couple things on the side of the road today. This guy, look at this thing. Look at that, just sitting there at the end of someone's driveway. Can't beat that price. Let's see if it works. 
seems to spin. Oh, it makes a little noise. Oh, it's gone now. What was that about? Probably just, oh, it was this thing. Yeah, well, I want to plug that in and see if that works. So it has, all right, we have it plugged in. It's a moment of truth. Let's see if it'll run. Uh, well, it's a little, a little bit of a funny sound there, but hey, look at that. Powers up and runs. This is the other thing I found on the side of the road. We threw this in the back of the truck, and it's, it looks pretty good. I mean, it's definitely been used. I can see a little bit of food down there, but I mean, my goodness, it looks fairly new. Yeah, it has been used. Hey, that's all right. What do we got here? It's LG Smart Think something or other. I started diving into this uh, this dishwasher, and I want to show you guys how I test these things. But I plugged it in, and it's absolutely dead. There's no power at on on the control board. So I had to do a little bit more deep diving here, and I'll show you how I'm doing that. I have it rigged up with these alligator clips. There is power on right now. So that's how I rig up these dishwashers is just doing that. And so it's just dangling there. So you gotta be really careful about that. Um, so the power comes in and the first board it goes to is this uh, filter board here and it has a fuse on it but I'm looking at it and the this board is fine because you see I have my alligator clips um, onto the output side of this board and it's showing 120. So I know that this board is good, power is going through there. So now I have to figure out where it goes from there. Um, so it's a, there's a little uh, connector over there. I have to follow where that goes and it may go to this guy here which is, uh, there's not much you can do about that. If, if, if there's a component that's bad on that board, I won't be able to um, fix that. But these boards are kind of inexpensive and easily replaced. So I'm just gonna keep going along here and trying to figure out why it's not powering up. It could just be a simple door switch. I don't know, I don't know yet, but I thought I'd show you, uh, you know, what I do to try, kind of troubleshoot these appliances. I did look this one up. Um, it's a tw it's a 2019 dishwasher, so it's only three years old. There's a little little tag there. 2019, and it's you know it's one of the more inexpensive ones. You can get this for about $700 uh, plus tax and all that. So let me uh, do a little bit more digging, and hopefully we'll bring this thing back to life this board into this harness and so there is power going into this board but for, for whatever reason it's not going to the controls so power is coming on coming in but not going out so there's something wrong with this that's my conclusion there's nothing else uh, everything else it should be powering up so there's something wrong with here um, you know the only other thing I can see is that this Little fuse has no continuity, so maybe, yeah, maybe this fuse is is done. But um, you know, I don't. I hate how they put these boards in epoxy uh, because it makes it impossible to service something like this. Um, I'm sure they would say like, well, we put it in epoxy so that it prolongs the life of the components, but that's just BS. They just don't want you fixing your own stuff. They want you to just, you know, buy a new appliance. You know, it's rigged against us. I, I just wish we would be allowed to fix our own stuff better. So you would have to just buy a whole new board like this, and I can't seem to find any online right now. I'm gonna do dig a little bit deeper, but there is just used ones and that's it. Um, and the used one was like 140, so I don't really feel like it's 
worth it to go any further with this. Um, sometimes, like this is the cover, you kind of look for burn marks. You can see one right down there by the fin. And that is like right there. There's a little bit of blackness on this heat sink. I don't know if that would have caused it. If that would be... I don't see anything else burned or maybe it's just, just dirt or something. It has a Wi-Fi uh, board in here so you can connect it. Where does it say? Yeah, you can connect it to your phone. So you can, uh, uh, you know, program and turn on your dishwasher by your phone. You know, all these little gadgets and gizmos, it just makes everything harder to repair. There's a little Wi-Fi board right there. And I don't know what that would be for. It's just some sort of, that's just the chime. And then just like a sp splitter board. So power goes in from the main control board here and then gets diverted. And uh, I tested these switches, these door switches, and they're fine. So, um, yeah, I'll take this thing apart and I'll sell a few of the parts here. You know, the, uh, the detergent dispenser is always uh, a good seller for me. So you look at these racks and they look pretty good, but this one here is starting to rust out right there. Whole things falling apart. You know, if I were still using this, I would just take my angle grinder, cut that off there, there, and there, and then you can plastic dip the ends so that you can stop that rust. But again, like this thing shouldn't be rusting after only a couple of years of use. I don't know, I find it really ridiculous how uh, you know people pay a lot of money for these things and they just do not last. Oh well, I tried. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling frustrated. I didn't spend any money on this silly thing. Just feel bad for people that, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of dough, like seven or eight hundred bucks, whatever they paid for it. Anyways, yeah, it's just for fun taking this thing apart. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take, take a few parts off of it, sell those, and scrap the rest. There it is. I got the paint. I had to give the, I had the paint code, but they also wanted the VIN number. So I think they wanted the VIN number just to double check and make sure it's the right paint color because they don't want to get a return. I guess that's my uh, theory on that. So I got charcoal color. So there's the, the amount, $65.30. Uh, I have the truck jacked off and the back wheels off. Which is funny because I just had, I just did a tire rotation a couple days ago. Uh, but this is what I am doing here. Show you all this work here. I got a lot of rust right up in here. So I took my angle grinder, used that guy, and I just pulverized all the rust in these holes. There's another one over here, and there's little itty bitty ones here. And inside here, I wiped this down quite a bit. I'm going to just go in here and prime the hole inside and then I'm going to put some of the black asphalt undercoating but I got some pretty bad rust here <laughs> I don't know what to do with this it's all rotten there it's all gone for now I want to just get this primed up so I don't get any flash rusting and then I'm going to work on uh, the other side which I don't think is as bad I'll show you that I haven't really, uh, I haven't done anything yet except wash. I wash the inside a little bit, but I don't think this side is going to be as bad. Um, it's funny, the, the driver's side is pretty bad, I guess, because you get more splash from from cars, or the the center line is usually salted more. But yeah, that's where I'm at right now. You know, I don't want it to look beautiful. I'm not trying to make it look good. I just want to stop the rust. You know, is that too much to ask, GM? <laughs> You know, uh, I don't know. This is a good truck. I really like this truck, so I want to take good care of it. I want it to la me want to make it last. And yeah, it's only I'm only at like 125 kilometers on it right now, so I still got a lot of life life left in this thing. All right, next day, and I've done quite a bit of sanding on this. So that's about four layers of bondo that I've been putting on here. 
put it on, sand it down, put it on, sand it down. And I've done 100, then 220, so I feel pretty good about going ahead with primer now. And a little bit down there. On the inside here, I've coated the whole inside with this stuff, black asphalt undercoating. So I did one layer of uh, self-etching primer, and then I did, I used this. And I mean, look at my arms. It's just sprayed everywhere, and my face looks like that too. It was pretty messy. There's that hole I was talking about. But, uh, eh, I like it. It looks really good in here. I feel a lot better about it now. Like I said, I just don't want this rust to spread anymore. And uh, there's the Bondo stuff up there. Oops. There's the Bondo with uh, some mesh that I put on there. I think that's going to be good for now. I think I'll come by again with some, maybe the, the black asphalt again. I just spray that again. And, uh... I guess I'll just have to work on keeping this area clean of debris and use lots of uh, rust proofing. So that's looking good over here. And on the other side, it's really not much at all. It's just a few little spots. There are hardly any holes at all over on this side. I think there was like one there. That's about it. Yeah, then I did the same thing over here. So that's that. I'm all, it's all ready to go. I'm going to mask it off and uh, prime it. Well, there we go. The job is done. It looks pretty good, except the only thing I'm kind of disappointed in is the, I'm disappointed in the, the clear coat. So you can see me pretty good in the reflection there. And then the side that I did it has, it's very matte. So. Not sure what is causing that. I put I put five coats of clear coat on this actually, five different coats. But uh, anyways, it looks fine to me. Uh, and it, I got rid of all that rust, and I did all the inside here, so that looks all good. And uh, there was also some spots under here. I redid underneath here. We had lots of rock chips, so I I got rid of all the rust there. Here's the other side. Same thing. See what I mean? It's very uh, low gloss, but I I like it. I just wish if, if with the rest of the truck would be like that. Then if if I was going to go with that, but you know, seriously, I, I tell myself no one's going to notice this sort of thing. Only me. Then I had enough paint left over and I did my rockers so it was just surface rust still in pretty good shape down here but I just ground off all of the rust and then I put three coats of primer and two coats I managed to squeeze out two coats of a of, of base coat and then I'm gonna go over this with uh, some clear coat and that'll be that and then I'm going to add some, uh, I was at, did some garage sale stuff yesterday. It wasn't very eventful, I didn't find too much stuff. But I got a couple cans of, uh, of that. I also got a shop vac, 10 bucks. $10 shop vac, it's a 13 gallons, good size, it works, works well, has lots of attachments. And this is a little life hack for you guys, I took an angle grinder and I ground off the uh, I guess it's just like a ring that was around here so it prevented you from plugging this in to uh, like a wall socket for example it would only allow you to plug it into an extension cord that was only one you know one socket so I, I took my angle grinder and I just cut this all, all the way around so now you can just plug it in wherever <clears throat> Those are really good jack stands.
If you guys have a fly problem in your in your house, get one of these bags. Look at all those guys in there. We're in the country. Oh my god, it's so thick, but full of flies. It's kind of disgusting. But yeah, we're in the country, and I have chickens, so there's lots of these flies hanging around. And if you don't do something about it, they'll just come into your house, and it's crazy. So. This is a disposable one. All you do is add water and it's great. I would say it's about that thick of just flies. But the water level is like right up to here. Yeah, I like this thing. I've tried many other traps before, you know, like the fly ribbons and stuff. And I, this is the best because, you know, when, you, when you're done with it, you can just keep adding water over and over again. But when you eventually want to throw it out at the end of the year, just just go ahead. So, uh, I had ones that were more like this style that you had to clean out and it was pretty gross. And you bought little packets that you added to it, but not this guy. I recommend it. All right, we are coming in here to collect some eggs. That is brand new, so I'll take that. I washed them, so don't mind if it has a little bit of manure on it. Sometimes at night I forget to collect so I have to come in here you know late in, at night time and this whole perch is full of chickens and you know worst part <laughs> sometimes you have to take your chances collect the eggs while you're underneath them and hope they don't drop anything on you but I won't lie it has happened before I have one two three four broody hens and normally, I would let them go broody to get some more chicks. But, since I am moving, I'm not letting that happen. So, this girl has been broody for a long time now. I'm thinking at the very end of when we are about to move, I will uh, I'll, uh, let her go broody and hatch, have a, little, have a little family. And then so the next people will have... Uh, have... Uh, some chicks because they have a couple young children and I think they would really like to see a, a hen mama hen with her chicks so that's my plan we, ca I, we call this chicken uh, Canada goose so kind of looks like Canada goose so that is Canada goose she is really nice and this one's really nice too. She's gone broody a few different times. She is, we call her the, the big black hen with no pupils. <laughs> she has no pupils, it's all black. And uh, so she's really nice, most of the time, most of the time. You on the other hand, you are mean. So I'm trying to get the eggs from underneath her. Ah! She's just gotta go for it and get pecked. Ow, stop it, ow. I know you have more. Uh. <laughs> ah. Sometimes you just kind of just get under there, and it doesn't hurt. Sometimes they can really pick at you. What? Anything else? You got one more. Dude. Sorry. And this one over here, same deal. You're pretty mean too. You got a lot under here, my goodness. You got a lot of eggs today. Yeah, ouch, 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 okay, I'm sorry. My goodness. Ah. One more. There we go. Not too bad. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. 28 eggs today. So there any back here. Sometimes they go back there. Not today. So yeah, pretty happy about this new water bottle I bought. 
it was $65, and that one was big, this big one too that I got at the same time. So going big is always better when you go for, when you're picking out your water and feeder, get as big as you can get.